The Bridgewater New Jerusalem Church, I'd like to welcome our friends on Facebook this morning and everyone who's here today. Just a few announcements. Um, we still have the, well, I think it's over there. Um, <laughs> we have information about pandemic relief for mem our individuals in the church. Um, today, there will be spiritual discussion groups following worship over in the front of the sanctuary. Um, there is a sign up at the back of the church for Easter lilies in memory of loved ones for next week. If all church members could please stay for a quick vote at the end of the service, very quick. Also coming up is our annual meeting, and that will be April 11th at 11.30. Um, if you can't be here in person, it will also be on Zoom. So contact me um, or Susanna, and if you aren't able to be here, we'll get that information. And for our news section, do we have any good news today? Susan. Annabelle is six years old today. Annabelle is six years old today. Our, our youngest little one. Um, she had her birthday party yesterday and she brought out her favorite stuffed cow for me to play with. So that was good. That was good. Yeah, so six years old. Six years old. Do you remember being six? Yeah. I don't. All right. So let's begin this morning with hymn number 200. And if you feel so led, we would invite you to come lay your palms in front of the river where Jesus is riding his donkey. donkey. So we welcome you to do that. Number 267, we'll do all three verses. Two what? Two, six, seven. In the blue book. In the, in the regular blue book. Its numbers are also in the bulletin as well. <laughs> Let us join in a unison call to worship in your bulletin. 
A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Please be seated. On this very special day of the Christian calendar, I'd like to just lift up for us that the purpose that God gave for us in this life is to become a heaven. And he intends for that path to be a joyful path. That we are intended for heaven is how we are born. And there is a path to follow, just as Jesus followed his path and ministry and to come to this day when he enters Jerusalem at the time of the Passover feast. It is a very sacred time in Jerusalem. And when he enters and his followers rejoice and set their cloaks and the palms before him, he is rejoicing with them. He is giving that sense to us that all is well and all is beautiful and the life in this world is a gift and aren't we so glad we can be together. Now we know that his journey through the next week, the Holy Week experience, is going to be a rough one for him. And as we talked about last week, he predicted his death. He knew what was coming. Do we know what's coming in our lives? Pretty much not. Pretty much anything can be a surprise during a day when we didn't know what was coming next and maybe it's going to be difficult. But if we can remember that our purpose is to come to a state of peace and joy in the Lord, that the bumps in the road are part of life. We're going to have our ups and our downs. And Jesus' journey through the Holy Week is going to include a number of those ups and downs. But because he reminds us that this life is not all there is, which is what he told his disciples when he said, I will be resurrected on the third day, the reminder to us is we will also come through our hard times and we will find that joy again that we feel on this day celebrating Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. That no matter what our life brings us, the ups and the downs, it will give us an opportunity to come back to that state when we look to Jesus, when we pray for that peace, and when we allow ourselves to feel his presence. And I wanted to share with you a, a, a experience that I shared with my, I, I spoke with my grandchildren about yesterday. They were with us and we went to the park because we wanted to get out. It's a park that's near the water that I like to walk along and throw, throw rocks in the, in the water. And lo and behold, in the middle of the park, guess who was there? The Easter Bunny. Well, weren't they surprised? They knew it wasn't Easter yet, but the Easter Bunny was there. They were so happy to see the Easter Bunny. They were so happy to collect eggs. And we went to the car, and I said afterwards to them, I said, isn't it nice to remember that any day could bring a surprise? In this case, it was a nice surprise. Sometimes we get the not so nice surprises, and we need to roll with those too. But let's remember that the Lord wants to bring the beautiful surprises into our life when we feel connected, when we feel the love from one another. And when you get that first hug, I don't know about any of you have had it yet, but that first hug with someone you haven't hugged in a year, it is the Lord in that moment, and it is Amen. a beautiful thing. Amen. So let's move along and sing our next hymn, number 273, and we'll sing all four verses. Which number? 273. It's in your bulletin.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you this day to open our hearts in celebration of your joyous entry into Jerusalem. You're coming into the midst of all of the ups and downs of the Holy Week that will come next. We know that all those who greeted you that morning, that laid down their cloaks and palms and branches, came with joyous hearts full of the love that you had taught them, full of the appreciation of your ministry of healing and teaching, in awe of the miracles that you performed. And each one of us asks this day that we might have that kind of open heart, knowing that you are here with us now and ever with us, opening us to see the joys in our lives and in, in the world around us, helping us to get through the difficult times. Help us to know that you intend us for the joy of heaven now, as we can open our hearts to forgiveness, compassion, patience, and the healing of others and ourselves by the acceptance of your eternal love. Lord, there are those in our lives who are in need of the felt feeling of your presence, and we lift up their names now, and we ring a bell to lift up this prayer and these, all these prayers to the heavens, that you might send your heavenly angels to comfort, protect, and heal those that we love. I invite you now to lift up the names of those who are on your heart. Lord, hear us now as we pray in the silence of our hearts. Dear Lord, in these prayers, as in all things, we ask that your divine will be done. Hear us now as we pray in the words that you've taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. with our affirmation of faith found in your bulletin. And let us rise. We worship the one God, the Lord, the Savior, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of the world, in whom is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whose humanity is divine, who, for our salvation, did come into the world, and take our nature upon him. He endured temptation, even to the passion of the cross. 
He overcame the house and so delivered man. He glorified his humanity, uniting it with the divinity of which it was to God. Without this, no mortal could have been saved, and they are saved who believe in him and keep the commandments of his word. This is his commandment, that we love one another as he has loved us. Amen. And we'll sing our next hymn, number 106, verses 1 and 3.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is anyone who comes in the name of the Lord. When we come into any situation, when we bring love and presence and acceptance and compassion, we are coming in the name of the Lord. Our Palm Sunday celebration commemorates Jesus' entry into Jerusalem with, amidst his followers surrounded by crowds of cheering friends and strangers and jeering detractors, the Pharisees. How like our lives, when we find moments of joy and celebration, they are right there in the midst of our struggles, pain, and challenges. The experience of Jesus entering Jerusalem on Palm Sunday has it all, as do we, when we speak truth, share love, and serve others. The story of Holy Week encompasses Jesus' entry into Jerusalem triumphantly, then the celebration of the Passover supper with his disciples, his arrest in the quiet of the night in the Garden of Gethsemane, and finally his crucifixion at Golgotha and his burial in a tomb. Throughout, he modeled for us an acceptance and forgiveness that can give us strength on our own life journeys. Today we celebrate Jesus, all of him, his substance, which is love, his form, which was wisdom, and his activity, the teaching, healing, and modeling the life that leads to heaven. Each Lenten season we commemorate Jesus' walk from life to death and resurrection from Ash Wednesday to Easter morning. These 40 days are a remembrance of the 40 years in the Israel, of the Israelites in the desert before they entered the land of Canaan, as well as the 40 days Jesus fasted in the wilderness before he began his ministry. This Lenten period was instituted by the early church to help Christians to come anew to a place of repentance and openness to receiving the message of eternal life each year. It is a period of devotion that is recognized by most all Christian denominations around the world. Throughout Lent, we have focused on the ministry, teachings, and example of the Lord and ourselves, on the substance, the form, and the activity of the Lord in our world and in our individual lives. It is my hope and prayer that this Lenten season has deepened your walk with the Lord and with each other and hopefully succeeded in the purpose of increasing your devotion to your spiritual regeneration and deepening relationship within spiritual community. The Swedenborgian description of God as one divine substance in multiple divine forms for the purpose of divine activity has guided us. Let's hear that again. Swedenborg, the Swedenborgian description of God as the divine substance in multiple divine forms for the purpose of divine activity. And this has guided us to receive love and understanding and to live the message of eternal life that our Lord Jesus Christ brought into the world so long ago. Let's pause with that sense for a moment that we too have the substance of love the form of wisdom, and the activity of usefulness within each one of us. Just as in the Lord, in our lives, this is the way to do good, seek the truth, and live in the way that he modeled for us. This is Jesus' way, and we say he is the way, the truth, and the life. His life, his path that we follow, when we follow him. If we just say with our mouths that we believe in Jesus, but we don't act in love, 
those words are empty. When we feel the love of the Lord, but we don't say anything about it, we're keeping it to ourselves. And when we feel the overwhelming sense of love in our lives and we don't reach out to others, we're missing the point. That Jesus' love comes through us as a shining light and warmth that makes it impossible not to reach out to others is the way that it's supposed to work as recipient beings of his substance, form, and activity. When we allow ourselves to truly be his children, we are whole in that that one love unites us. Our many wisdoms inspire us. And the life of spiritual community keeps us growing in him with each other. The diversity of ways to love and approach the Lord and form community to celebrate that relationship give us each the freedom to choose where our souls feel most at home. And I pray that all of us have grown in our faith throughout our Lenten observances. And I'd like to pause for another moment to talk about the form of our community. It is not simply the people that come into this church. We are like pebbles in the pond. And when we go out into the world, what emanates from us creates community. We have communities of family. We have communities of neighbors. We have communities of clubs. We have communities of schools. All these many communities that we form is for the purpose of celebrating our relationships with one another, to grow in those relationships, and to feel the strength of that. That is the Lord's love through each person. Jesus experienced peaks and valleys in his life as he walked from the high excitement and joy of Palm Sunday to the lowest of sorrows as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, was accused and then suffered and died on the cross. The transformation of Jesus' earthly life to eternal life on Easter morning was the completion of his life and his work, the greatest of which was the miracle of resurrection, which brought to the world the hope of eternal life on which Christian belief was formed. To be truly Christian, we are called to walk as he did, loving, healing, teaching, sharing, with our eyes on the eternal, through all the peaks and valleys of our lives. We each have had unique challenges. The Lord has been with you through all of those times. The Lord has been with you and holding you up and strengthening you so that you might move from the valley of the shadow of death into the joyous celebration of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem today. And today, as we celebrate this high moment of community, as did Jesus' followers on the road to Jerusalem, we can glimpse the joy and the peace of wholeness that is the eternal life that is now within us in the depths of our faithful souls. For eternity is not some other day, some other time, just after we die. Eternity in includes this present moment and every moment. On earth as it is in heaven, we are praying that we might feel that heavenly peace and joy in this life. To know that the faith that we have is real, that the Lord is guiding us to an eternity where we will feel that peace and joy, but we can feel it now too. And we can let the challenges be just that, a challenge that we move through until we are changed by it and we move forward. It is often said that the deepest spiritual connection comes in the deepest sorrow and the deepest tragedy because we, open, we are cracked open, not even by our own desire, but we are cracked open to feel the depth of our hearts, to feel that our hearts and what they feel and what they experience is the real eternity that is here with us right now. May we all continue to grow in the Lord and in community, sharing our peaks and valleys, and celebrating that the Lord is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now take our offering for the work of the church.